guys, this is the EC Service Tech. And today what we're looking at is condensate pumps. And we're looking at overall maintenance on condensate pumps and potential problems. All right, so uh, we have several different types of condensate pumps. This one is Beckett condensate pumps, and, and this style is a little giant. All right, this one right here is a low profile. All right, I have ones break that are little giant. I have ones break that are Beckett and other manufacturers. Um, so, you know, either one, but this happens to be two ones that are Beckett's that are uh, actually bad. So we're just going to go over some of the preventative maintenance on these, all right? Uh, typically, you don't use condensate pumps unless uh, you don't have the potential for uh, pitching your condensate line um, just due to gravity, all right? So when you can't get away with uh, pitching it by gravity with your, say, three-quarter inch PVC uh, condensate line, you use a condensate pump. I would recommend you use a standard depth condensate pump and, and not the low profile. The low profiles uh, have less margin for error just due to them being shorter. But, um, you know, you got to do what you got to do. All right. Uh, in order to keep the, the slime or sludge down inside of these, you, you might want to use those uh, Rector Seal uh, Hydrex tablets or some other manufacturers' uh, tablets, and uh, they cut down on the sludge. Not necessarily on the um, the calcium and different things like that, but um, but on the sludge. But anyway, um, that will help the pump mechanism down in here. It'll, it'll help that so it doesn't um, get sludged up as, as bad because these will, you'll hear it and the, the, the motor will be trying to pump, but it just has a real hard time. Uh, in reference to right your, your barb fittings right here, all right, for your 3 8 poly line, your, the Beckett ones, have a one-way valve that's like this, all right? And you can clean that off and rub it a little bit, stuff like that. Uh, sometimes these get closed shut, all right? So you just gotta take this off and clean it. And then this is just hollow on the inside, all right? When you're done, you can just put it back together, put it in, all right? You just need a small adjustable wrench to, to uh, start unscrewing that, all right? Uh, the Beckett ones, have a little ball float in there, all right? So you can feel the ball jumping around in there, and what you do with them are you just take your compressed air, all right? You blow it back and forth. The, the compressed air doesn't have to be crazy high, all right? You can put some water in there and then blow it, water in there and blow it, but that will clean that out so you can hear the ball moving back and forth in there correctly. Once you put your uh, PVC lines down in there, you can pick which ones you're going to use, but I would recommend just leaving the caps on the other ones so you don't have other things getting into your water like bugs and stuff. Um, in reference to how these particular pumps failed, this one, the clear poly line actually was clogged, all right? It was clogged in mulch, and so the pump was running, 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 running and not able to pump any water out, and the windings finally burnt out. So as far as diagnosis on that, you just take this assembly off first. It's just one screw on this one, all right? You just take that off, and you isolate your motor, all right? This was right here. This was right here, all right? So you just go ahead and disconnect those. Obviously, you turn the power off, then you disconnect that. What you're doing is you're isolating the motor windings. Right, we're going to turn our, our multimeter on to resistance. And we have OL. All right. So it's over limit. That means that the windings are actually burned apart. All right. Versus this motor right here, this motor is actually in, in okay shape. All right, and that one we have 10 ohms of resistance, all right? If you have alligator clips, you can just alligator clip it onto the wire. That makes a good connection. But anyway, um, so you have 10 ohms of resistance. Normally, you're looking anywhere from about 10 to uh, 16 ohms of resistance on these condensate pumps. Um, th these switches right here, this this micro switch actually turns the pump on and turns it off. So, so when this is up all the way, it's going to close this switch 
and it's directly in line with the motor wiring. All right. So what you have is you, you have the hot wire going straight to the pump. All right, and then it comes out and it's actually breaking your common. Most uh, motors you're usually breaking your hot. These ones happen to break the common coming back. All right. So to check this micro switch right here, you can just go ahead and pull up on the float. All right, and then you're just going to take a resistance reading. And right now we see 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. Okay, and then when we let it down, we read OL. Oh so that switch is working properly. All right, this switch is actually your high water cutoff. So if the pump is not running or it's not plugged in or something like that, uh, this is to shut shut off your uh, your your wire or your red wire. Basically what it's doing is it's opening the electrical circuit. All right. So when this is down right here, so make sure you can see that when this is down, these wires right here are closed. All right. When this is up, these are open. It's breaking the electrical circuit. All right. So it should read 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance if the micro switch is correct. All right. So that is working well. Now we're going to lift, lift the switch, and it opened up the wiring. Okay, let it back down. It reads 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance again. Okay. So sometimes the micro switches fail. Um, on this one right here, the micro switch is working okay now. I was actually just playing with it a little bit, and it started making a good contact in here again. And I don't know if that just had to do with the amperage running through here and it was just burning the, uh, the contacts or something like that in here. Um, but, uh, but this is now functioning correctly and that's why this one was pulled out of service because that micro switch was not acting right now. I don't know if that was due to the sludge um, that was not allowing this to come up all the way uh, or it was the contacts inside this. But for whatever reason, it was not allowing the power to go through and the condensate pump was not turning on and just to be safe more safe than sorry I uh, I replaced that just for the cost of the condensate pump was it was not that bad all right if you are installing this type of uh, condensate pump right in this tab will not allow the condensate pump to turn on so you even if you fill this thing up with water it's plugged in it's not going to turn the condensate pump on and it's just going to let water overflow it's actually holding the uh, switch down. So what you need to do is you can actually uh, just pull that out and you're near fine. But just for us to take a look at the inside, we can just remove this screw right here, slide this forward and open it up. And you can see that's the tab right there. And when this float picks up due to water inside, then this micro switch right here will allow the pump to run, okay? This uh, micro switch right here is for your high water cutoff. All right, so you need to break either the the Y wire or the red wire going right to your thermostat. But uh, on your control board, your red comes off your R terminal, and that's 24 volts, and it comes back to Y uh, for cooling, W for heat, or G for fan. If you if you break the wire, all right, and you install say this the Y terminal and this to your yellow wire that was going to your Y terminal on your control board, that will um, that will not allow the outdoor condenser to run. All right, so which means that condensate would not be gathering in here. You could also break red wire going to your thermostat. The thermostat would end up going blank. All right, as long as you didn't have batteries. And if you did have batteries, you wouldn't notice anything. Um, and, you know, your, your air conditioning system just wouldn't work. So if an air conditioning system air conditioning system isn't working or your thermostat goes blank, you know, you might want to look at the float switches. You have one here. If you have a condensate pan, you likely have a float switch in that. You may also likely have a float switch in your evaporator coil as your secondary higher drain hole. Um, so, so those things may be cutting off the power going to the thermostat or it's cutting out your, your signal wire of Y going to the control board to turn your air conditioning system on. All right, well, that's that. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.